Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at how to play Fly Me to the Moon. Fly Me to the Moon is a request for Annette, and this is an interesting tune, it's packed with two five ones, which is something I will explain as we go along. I'll show you the, the basic tune, I'll show you a few ways to dress up the tune, and then we'll look at improvisation on the tune. Uh, it was written in 1954 by Bart Howard, and apparently it took him 20 minutes to write, <laughs> which is 20 minutes well spent. Um, it was originally written in 3-4 time, interestingly, and it was Quincy Jones who first came up with the idea of recording it in 4-4 time. Uh, it's, a, it's a good tune to know because it's a medium tempo and it's very well known even among people who know nothing about jazz. So, let's first of all look at the, the basic tune. I'll just play through it at medium tempo exactly as I've written it. One, two, three, four. Now you'll notice there's a lot of uh, syncopation there and actually following that exact uh, syncopation as written is quite tricky and quite unnecessary. So you listen to someone singing this and they will mess around in all sorts of ways with the phrasing and you can do exactly the same. Providing you know the skeleton of the melody, don't feel at all tied to the particular way that any note is, is played. And I think it's important that you do put your own stamp on any tune like this that you play. So I'm going to play it again, this time I'll do it with the backing, and I'm going to stay close to the melody, but I'm just going to loosen it up and alter the phrases a bit. I will also um, go up the octave at some point. So you can see that's quite a lot more interesting, it feels a lot smoother and a lot jazzier. Uh, you may have noticed I did quite a lot of doubling notes up, which is a nice and very simple uh, thing to do. So a crotchet it turns into two notes, so instead of it's and I've also had what's called chain bowing. And I do have a video of, about swing bowing of which that is one of the techniques. So you might want to check that out. And there's another video I did about how to ornament a melody. So staying close to the melody, but finding interesting ways to uh, rephrase it. Right, now let's look at the chord sequence. And there's a lot of chords here. Um, but first of all, before we analyse those chords too closely, um, I'm just going to show you the bluffer's way <laughs> to improvise through this. And I have to admit that when I first started playing jazz, this was the only way that I would play. 
I would find the kind of the, the um, find the tonic and then play the pentatonic scale all the way through a tune, and this would often lead me into dangerous waters. But let's just see what it sounds like with me just playing the C major pentatonic with a little bit of C major blues scale, and uh, I will more or less ignore all of the chords as we're going through. <laughs> So that's, um, it's bland and it's uninspired, um, but it's a start, <laughs> and if you know nothing about chords, that is a really good place to start. Um, so if, you, if you're not familiar with the pentatonic scale and the major blues scale, do check those out. Um, but really, um, after playing jazz for not very long, there's no excuse for playing like that. And uh, I'm going to now look at the two five ones. So if you if you take C as the one chord, then um, D is the two chord. In, in fact, it's D minor seven, and the five chord is G, and the one chord is C major seven. So whenever you see uh, the the sequence D minor seven to G seven to C major seven, that is a two five one. Um, and uh, yet again, I do have a video all about two five ones. If you're not clear what I'm talking about. But recognizing them makes it uh, much easier to find a neat way through a chord sequence. So if you look in the first line, um, this bar two, three, and four uh, are a two, five, one. Um, and then um, if you look at bar six, B minor seven flat five to E seven to A minor seven, that is a minor two, five, one. So the one in that case that you're going to is the A minor. We then have a uh, bar 9, D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7, that's another 2, 5, 1. Uh, the same again in the next line, we have the um, minor 2, 5, 1 again. B minor 7 flat 5 to E7 to A minor 7, and so on. So <laughs> there's lots of these 2, 5, 1s. And recognising them makes it a lot easier to improvise. So when you're doing a D minor 7 to G7 uh, to C major 7, you can go... You can run down the scale from the D minor, from the D note, so that's on the D minor 7 chord, that's on the G7 chord, and that's hitting the C major, it's hitting the C on the C major chord. And so that is, is a nice uh, run down, and within that space you're actually free to do anything you like over the C major scale, but it's a good idea to uh, end on a strong note like the tonic or the, or the third or the fifth. So let me play through it again and this time I'm going to try and do that. Each time there's a 2 5 one, I will do a descending scale through that 2 5 one. playing one of those scales we were on 251 and we were within what I would call a safe zone for improvisation where nothing is going to go wrong 
providing you know what the tonic is for those three bars or those three chords. Um, obviously it's pretty uninspired to do just a descending scale but it gives you an idea of where those are. And I'll just point out that with the minor two five ones what we're doing is using the harmonic minor scale to go down there. Right, let's uh, do it again, uh, play through, and this time I will uh, improvise um, closer to the chords and in a more interesting way, but again um, utilising closely those two five ones. Now you may have noticed there are several 7th chords, such as in bar 4 there's a C7, in bar 8 there's an A7, and um, these are outside of those two five ones. and what they're doing is kind of winding up the chord sequence. So if you think of a two five one as a bit of clockwork that's winding down, uh, it starts off with um, a certain amount of tension, and it, as it winds around, that tension disappears and you end up back on the 1. Well, the Turning a C major 7, which is the 1, into a C7 is like winding it up again and allowing it to go somewhere else. So uh, if it was unwinding all the time, then um, it, would, it would just stop. So those, these chords, the C7, the A7, they are effectively kind of driving the chord sequence along um, and making it interesting as we go along. And I think it's important that you don't just ignore those chords, but you... Um, you play either the, let's say for the C, if you play the seventh of that C, then that will um, emphasize where it's going. Or if you, on, when you get to the A minor seven to A seven, if you play the C sharp on the A seven, then and that helps to, um, it helps to point what's going on and it shows that you know uh, where you are in the sequence. Um, there's lots to there's lots more you could say about this, but I think I've uh, explained the main things that I want to do, which is the importance of the two five ones in here. Uh, if you would like a copy of the sheet music for this, then do subscribe and to the channel and send me an email. Uh, if you would like a, P, a a zip file with all of my PDFs, which is over three hundred and fifty of them now, then do uh, consider joining me on Patreon because it's Patreon that keeps these videos coming. And um, I do have a Music Gurus video course uh, based on my jazz violin book uh, which goes a lot into the, um, the different concepts explained here. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon.